Well, hi once again, everybody. Welcome into another edition of the 19th Hole Podcast for Golfers. I'm your host, Dennis Silvers. We've got a fantastic show for you today, as always, and we've got a uh, we've got a great, great guest, somebody we've had on before, one of our favorite guests to have on because the man is like a walking encyclopedia when it comes to the game of golf and its players and its venues and all of that stuff, and I'm sure you're going to be in for... Uh, uh, for a very, very nice time learning more about this gentleman. Before we get started, uh, as you know, our title sponsor is Encore Golf out of Buffalo, New York. They make some of the best golf, if not the best golf ball going, that Vero Wen. But they have something very special now. They are offering, introducing uh, an introductory golf uh, uh, offer to called Club Encore, and they're offering it to a limited number of people. And what do you get when you join Club Encore? You get free shipping on all of the golf balls that you order. You get free golf ball customization, which is absolutely awesome. You get a complimentary subscription to Golf Boost, which you know is absolutely fantastic to help you discover some of the faults in your golf swing, and you get preferred pricing on all of the other products that Encore Golf has, such as hats and golf bags and so on and so forth. So take advantage of it. Go to their website, EncoreGolf.com. Check out the new Club Encore and... Uh, subscribe. You're going to be very, very happy that you uh, did. Of course, the uh, U.S. Open is uh, over with in uh, Brookline at the Country Club in Massachusetts. Congratulations to a brand new winner. It was a great, great final event, and we look forward to uh, the Open at St. Andrews coming up in a couple of weeks, and everybody is expecting Tiger to play. They're going to have a wonderful field. I personally think that the uh, uh, championship is going to depend partly on the weather. It could either make or break some of these guys, but our guest knows all about that. He has booked his trip to St. Andrews. He knows all of the players, so let me tell you about our guest coming on. Bob Bupka has been a professional sports announcer for four decades. Bob is also recognized globally as a co-author of the top-selling book, the Ryder Cup, golf's greatest event. Bob co-hosted The Grill Room with Golf Channel's Alex Maselli on Sirius XM on the PGA Tour Network and continues to be an integral part of the golf coverage on Talk Sport Radio UK. Uh, Bob has conducted interviews with just about every modern-day golf icon on both the PGA Tour as well as the LPGA Tour. And Bob is simply known as the voice of golf. So with uh, with that being said and put away, it's my pleasure right now to uh, introduce, one, like I said, one of our favorite people, Bob Bupka. Bob, how you doing? Haven't seen you for a while. What's going on in your world? Well, Dennis, as you said, I'm getting ready to go over to St. Andrews for the 150th uh, Open Championship. Yeah. I, I love St. Andrews. Uh, St. Andrews and and Dennis, they're almost synonymous <laughs> because, uh, no, I'm serious, St. Andrews exudes golf. You exude golf. Uh, from the very first time I met you, your, your passion for the sport, your, your passion for broadcasting the sport is something that, that you know is a rare commodity, uh, and you ought to be congratulated. I mean, uh, it takes a lot of effort. It's not easy to be in the broadcast business to start with, and then broadcasting golf. Uh, you know, it's a, a very specialized field. Uh, let's put it that way. But one thing, and I'm going to share with you, and I think maybe even you're going to be surprised, Dennis. Okay. Uh, it's not only going to be the 50th Open Championship. But on the Tuesday, prior to the start of the Open Championship, Jack Nicholas is going to get an award from the village of St. Andrews. Wow. The only two people 
Only two people in history have ever received this award. One is Bobby Jones, which certainly no surprise right. to anyone. But I think the second one might be not only a surprise to you, but to a surprise to all of your viewers, none other than Ben Franklin. Really? Ben Franklin, ben Franklin went to St. Andrews University back in 1757. Wow. And about 20, 25 years ago, they presented him with this special award. Now they're giving it to Jack Nicholas. We're going to be there for that ceremony. So even before the first ball goes in the air on Thursday, I'm going to be over the moon. That is, I didn't know that. You're absolutely right. A total surprise. And that, that is absolutely awesome. Bob, would you agree with me that the weather can play a big part in the outcome of this tournament at St. Andrews? 100%. I mean, and, and quite frankly, uh, I've been there when it was 70 degrees and bright sunshine and, and no breeze. And quite truth be known, I hated it. I said, <laughs> come on, this is not St. Andrews. I've been there when it's 50 degrees and the wind is blowing and the rain is coming sideways. I say, yes, this is St. Andrews. But it has a bigger, as big an effect on the outcome as any venue that's played in the world of golf. It, it's at the hands of the weather. You're, you're spot on right. by, by recognizing that. And, and, and not only that, uh, you may have an early tea time where the weather is horrendous. It's perfect Thursday afternoon or vice versa. Right. And because it's a nice part of the day doesn't mean it's going to be nice the whole day but there's no place like it. There's no place like it, I agree. And you know, St. Andrews, as we both know, Bob, personifies, you know, Lynx golf, which is wonderful. It's a totally different game than they play here in America. Do you think a player, and Rory McIlroy, I think is a, is a good favorite that they have picked so far, but do you think somebody that has a lot of experience really has that much of an edge that has played Lynx golf? Or do you think that has to necessarily be the case? Well, I think you're right on, uh, Dennis. I, I think you better be experienced playing Lynx golf. Uh, the number one thing that you got to do different golf here in the United States basically is played through the air. When you get to St. Andrews, your objective is to get your ball on the ground right. as soon as possible. You can control it on the ground. <clears throat> you can't control it through the air over there. So, uh, you know, and that means maybe landing 50, 60, 70 yards short of a green and, and running it up. There's no target golf of, of flying it to the pin and right. hoping it's going to stop. It's, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, it's just the... Uh, the other thing that I say, and I think you get a kick out of this, Dennis, if I were to take a dozen people that absolutely hate golf, they, they don't play it, they don't watch it, they don't care about it, I'll take them to St. Andrews, and they'll say to me, <laughs> wow, I love this place. I mean, there's, <laughs> hey, there's, there's magic about it. Yeah. It's uh, it, it, it's just very difficult to describe. Yeah, it is you. And if you're lucky enough to play golf and 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 have been there as, as I have, it's just a a very very memorable experience. Tiger Woods is expected to play. He says it's his favorite golf course in the whole world. He's won the Open there a couple of times. Uh, what are you expecting from Tiger? <laughs> Well, I've given up a long time ago trying to uh, predict Tiger. I was just at the PGA Championship at Southern Hills, and it was the Tuesday prior to the start of the event. Tiger was doing his um, interview with the yeah. media, and, and as he exited the media area, I was there, and he walked over and shook my hand and uh, I had been at all 15 of Tiger's major victories. So we, we go back quite a ways. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the thing that really struck me, I, I, I reminded him, I, I said, you know, Tiger, I've covered all 15 of your major wins. He said, I know that, Bob. He said, I'm going to give you another one. I said, what, Tiger? 
He says, I'm going to give you another one. I said, you're going to give me another major? He said, I promise you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you another wow. uh, major win. Wow. And he didn't specify, but I think for sure he had in mind St. Andrews, because if he's ever going to win another major, I think it's going to be St. Andrews. Now, as you alluded to uh, at the top of your show, it's going to a lot going to depend on the weather. I mean, he may get a break uh, and, and right. get good weather, right? Uh, or he may get a bad break and, and play in horrendous weather over there. And then, no matter how well you play, you're not going to win. Right. So there's a little luck of the draw involved. But I know one thing: my hand is still recovering from Tiger shaking it. And that guy's got some, some powerful grip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that uh, that he is. It's it's going to be very very interesting. And I think right now he's like forty to one or something like that. But obviously that that is going to uh, that's going to change as we get a little closer uh, to the event. What do you think about, and what is your opinion about what's going on between the PGA Tour and this new LVI Tour? in Saudi Arabia. So much is being written about it. I have my own personal view about it, but number one, what do you think of a tour like that? Number two, what do you, did you ever suspect that some of the big names that are in the world of golf are going to head over there, Bob? Well, it's, uh, it's sad, but it's very true. You put enough zeros uh, on that check. Right. And unfortunately, you can get a lot of people to do things that you would never think right. that they would do. Uh, the interesting part, Dennis, and, and I'd be interested in your opinion because it, it's strictly my opinion about what I'm about to say. I think when this thing first got underway, and this is not something new, Greg Norman has had this grudge basically for 30 years. Yep. I yep. mean, uh, he went to Tim Fincham way back when, wanting a world golf tour, and it never came about. And and now finally, uh, he found uh, you know the financing that that you know can cover uh, an operation like this. But I firmly believe, and this is what I want you to weigh in for me, that Jay Monahan, the commissioner of the PGA Tour said to himself, well, there may be players that want to go play on this live tour, but they're not going to be playing in the majors. And that's going to keep a lot of players from not leaping to the live tour. And then the USGA announces, well, guys that qualified can play. Uh, the Masters is non-committal. Right. The RNA just the... Uh, a matter of hours ago, de right. declared that anybody that's qualified for this year's Open at St. Andrews uh, can be there. Uh, PGA of America uh, probably will allow players. And, and here's, here's the reason that these majors are doing that. Let's put Dennis in charge of these four events. Now you have an option of eliminating some of the biggest names from your event right why would you want to do that i mean it, it wouldn't make any sense i agree and i think when the commissioner of the pga tour became aware of the fact that these majors are going to allow these players to participate it made his job a heck of a lot tougher yeah i bob i could not agree with you a hundred percent and i think it's very well said I agree with you that it's all about the money. Sure, titles, uh, winning is very important. But like when you said, when you put enough zeros be on that check, you know, that's going to do a whole lot of things for these guys. Number two, I think they figure, Bob, and I want to get your opinion on this too, why should I knock myself out trying to make cuts all year when, number one, I'm guaranteed three rounds, no cut, and I only have to play 14, 15, 16 events, and I could stay home the rest of the time with my family. Number three, I personally feel, Bob, that the guys that made the leap really don't care that much about what the other tour players think about it or, or, or call them. 
And finally, number four, to your point, I think a lot of people don't realize that the only event that the PGA Tour has uh, authority over, if you will, is the PGA Championship. The others are handled by the USGA. The Masters is an island upon itself. So I agree with you in what you say, Bob. What do you think? Yeah, and I, I think what you meant, uh, Dennis, the Players' Championship. The player Championship, I'm sorry. Yeah, not a problem. Well, let's put it this way. Had you just given that same list of reasons in front of the PGA Tour membership, they'd be lining up to sign up. They'd say, wait a minute. <laughs> what Dennis is saying makes a heck of a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, 15 times a year, more money than you're ever going to need. Right. I mean, one other thing that that I don't know if it's 100% factual, but it's probably somewhere in, in the realm uh, you hear the argument. It's like any other business. If you opened up a casino in Las Vegas where you're lucky enough to live and work and, and play golf and you didn't care whether the people that came to your casino made money or not, man, you'd be packed all the time. Right. Well, the money behind Live, I heard they earn like a billion dollars a day. So oh, if they're throwing yeah. out a hundred million here, a two hundred million here. What does that mean? The next day they get another billion. They're not going to run out of money. No, they don't. They're not opening this business to make it a money maker. And boy, that's tough competition if you're trying to make money. And I credit the PGA Tour. They've raised a tremendous amount of money. Oh yeah, uh, for charity. Yep. I, I think we're going to start hearing from Greg Norman uh, some probably some charitable aspects and and that's going to uh, help calm the waters uh, just a little bit more i mean for years for years pga tour they had like a machine gun over their players now they're wielding a cap gun i mean their firepower has been severely jeopardized i don't know what what holds in the future Maybe, you know, I, I'm hearing all about this new fall series, guaranteed money, no right. cut. I mean, it's almost a carbon copy uh, of what Liv is doing. So if you can't beat him, I guess you join him. I guess you join him. That's uh, that's uh, that's very well said. I've got, I got some thoughts on that too, Bob, that I want to ask you, but we're going to step away. We're going to take a short break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to have a lot more with our very special guest, Voice of Golf, Mr. Bob Gu Bob Bupka. Got to get my new teeth in right or something. So stay with us. We're going to be with you right after this. Welcome to Tea Time Fitness with Janice. Hi, I'm Janice Thornton, and today let's get an exercise for your shoulders. Grab your driver, go up overhead. You're going to go with your arms behind your head, bending one of your elbows. Now I want you to squeeze your shoulder blades together and really stretch out that chest and shoulder area. Make sure you do both sides. Now you're gonna to want to repeat this about three to five times on each side. To add into that same exercise, you can put your arms up overhead, go behind. If you have to bend your elbows, that's fine. You're gonna take a wider stance, bend over, and then just gently go side to side with your arms and do what feels comfortable. You do not wanna be in any kind of pain when you do that, but that will help with shoulder mobility and stability as well. So check out jtfitnessandgolf.com for more ideas like this.
all know that just about everything today is getting more expensive and golf is no exception. Well, I'm here to tell you about one golf company that is designed to save you money. That's right, I said save money. Welcome to breakfastballs.golf, a company that sells the best used golf balls in like new condition at a fraction of the price you'd pay anywhere else. Breakfastballs.golf carries all the popular brands of balls from Pro V's to Callaway to TaylorMade to Top Flight and many, many more. They even will ship you colored golf balls if that's your choice. They offer a great membership program as well where members receive free shipping all of the time, plus great discounts. Save money and time. Go to breakfastballs.golf and check them out. So why not give yourself a breakfast ball on every tee, not just the first? Go to breakfastballs.golf and save money. All right, welcome back, everybody. Let's continue our great conversation with our wonderful guest, Bob Budka, who is actually a golf talk show host and, and a reporter for a long, long time. Bob, uh, you brought up a good point. It's interesting that the tour all of a sudden is throwing a lot more money uh, at some of these events, as is the LPGA Tour. No matter how much money you throw at it, though, Bob, does that in any way assure better competition, better play from these players? I don't think it does. I couldn't agree with you more, Dennis. Uh, you know, it's, it sounds good. And, you know, X number of players are going to be thrilled with the prospects of, of making more money. I mean, the, the difference is most... PGA Tour players are pretty well compensated. Yeah. I mean, they live pretty well. Yeah. There's a huge percentage that fly in private jets. Yeah. I mean, they're way above, you know, a lot of them, you know, live the lifestyle of Dennis Silvers. So <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not poor people. Uh. But, you know, the difference between what a PGA Tour player makes and, you know, Phil Mickelson getting $200 million and Yeah. And, uh, you know, Brooks Kepka, $150 million. Yeah. And by the way, Brooks Kepka, once they accepted Chase Kepka, who's, uh, br you know, uh, his brother. His brother. Uh, I said, well, it's, it's not going to be too long before Brooks I is going to go. I, I think that was part of a package deal. And in, in some way, I, I admire Brooks. He's taking care of his brother. His brother wasn't going to be the uh, superstar on the right. PGA Tour that Brooks was. But now he's financially set. So Brooks is set. His brother Chase is set. And one other group of people that are really set, you know, are the caddies. You know, the caddies are going to be compensated as if they were caddying on the PGA Tour. Right. Now, you take a $4 million purse like Charles Schwartzel, or Schwartzel, excuse me, one, Right. Uh, in that first event in London, that's like a little four hundred thousand yeah. dollar payday yeah. for his caddy. Makes you and I want to head to the damn caddy shack. You got and, that and, right. And on my back. You yo, you're you're absolutely absolutely correct. Uh, I mean, we could go on and talk about this thing forever. I personally think that uh, the tour, the commissioner, is going to lose the lawsuit, the litigation that was filed. Either uh, I don't know antitrust or bad business practice because these guys are independent contractors. I think they should be allowed to play where they want to play and be able to come back. Uh, I have heard rumors that Monahan is on the hot seat as far as his job, but right now that's all speculation. So we are we're just going to have to uh, we're going just going to have to wait and see. Anyway, let me change gears a little bit, Bob. You have interviewed some of the, the biggest icons in the game of golf for a long, long time. What is one or two of the best interviews you've ever done with these people? Well, the one that really got me started, Dennis, uh, the 1986 Masters 
I was in position uh, when Jack came off that 18th green, having won his uh, 15th major six green jacket to be the first person to get a mic in front of him. And uh, within a, a few minutes, that, that interview went coast to coast. Uh, and even though I was just starting out in those days, uh, it still remains that as one of my all-time, all-time uh, great interviews and led to quite a friendship. Uh, matter of fact, you were kind enough to reference the book I wrote, uh, you know, the Ryder Cup mm -hmm. Golf's Greatest Event. I remember being in Manhattan at Crown Publishing and they said to me, who do you think you can get to do the forward? And I said, I don't really know. And I wasn't in the book writing business. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about forwards and all that stuff. But I just casually said, well, I could ask Jack Nicholas, and, <laughs> and they almost fell over. Uh, and I called Jack, and he said, send me the manuscript. Two weeks later, I got a call. Jack said, I, he said he'd be honored uh, to do the forward. And truth be known, when I got the, the jacket that was going to go on the book, and it had Jack's name on it, and it had my name on it, Crown said to me, what do you think? I said, I think, I don't care if we sell one copy. That's pretty I got cool. What I, my name is what Jack yeah. Nicholas is. Perhaps the, uh, the, the one instance that a lot of people get a kick out of, I was doing the President's Cup uh, down in Manassas. And on the tee, Dennis, was Jack Nicholas, Gary Player, both the captains for both sides, uh, Bill Clinton was roaming around, uh, trying to think a couple of other people and, and George, uh, W Bush senior, he was standing right alongside of me. And I, quite frankly, I was very nervous. You know, I'm there with a the microphone. I got a, a president of the United States standing alongside of me. And all of a sudden I feel a little nudge in my ribs. <laughs> and I said, oh, it's the president. And you know what he said, Dennis? He said, isn't this a name dropper's paradise? And I said, Mr. <laughs> president, if you think it's a name dropper's paradise, what do you think I feel? <laughs> that, that, is, that is so great. I want to ask you, though, Bob, you've been covering this game, like I said, for a long, long time. You've seen a lot of changes what is the biggest change in the game that that you want to speak to? Because I think of how the tour, and it all evolves, I think, though, how the tour is changing. Last week, U.S. Open, take a young kid like uh, Matt Fitzpatrick. Congratulations to him. Played beautifully. Will Zalatoris. I mean, there there's an ever-changing changing of the guard, if you will, Bob, how can you relate to that to when you first started? Well, number one, when I first started, somebody in their early 20s didn't go on the PGA Tour with any thought of winning. They went on the tour, hoped to get on the tour to see where the big boys played, maybe to see how they practice. Yeah. Uh, and it was going to be a, a learning curve for them. And they were very content uh, to go through three, four, five years before they even seriously thought uh, of winning. Nowadays, Dennis, they come right out of the box. Yep. Scotty Scheffler, yeah. when he came on the scene, he, he wasn't going to wait five years. You know, Will Zalatoros. Uh, uh, you know, the guy, uh, Colin Morikawa. Right. I mean, all these young guns. And I am so proud to say that when you look at the character of these young guys playing the game, it does you proud, it does me proud that we are involved in these sport, right. in this sport. Right. I mean, Scotty Scheffler, Scotty Scheffler, uh, you know, won all these events. He's got a green jacket. He drives a 92 GMAC truck. And his <laughs> his people said, Scotty, why don't you go out and buy yourself a new vehicle? Scotty's reply, nah, this one's running. I don't need I don't need a new truck. I mean, what character? And you know, he played at the University of Texas for yeah. Bill Fields, uh, who Texas just won the national championship right. again. Uh, Bill Fields at uh, 
as fine a coach as there is in, in the collegiate ranks. Uh, but that's the difference. Uh, on a personal basis, the major difference when I started, if I wanted to do a little follow-up with any of the pros, I knew what bar they'd be going to, and I'd make <laughs> myself available. Now, if I want to follow up, I have to go to the gymnasium. <laughs> They're not going to the bars. Yeah. No, you're you're uh, <laughs> you're absolutely totally totally correct. Uh, how has the game? Last question before our next break, Bob. How has the game itself? <clears throat> excuse me. Or what is the biggest change you see in the game itself from back in the day to now? Well, the realization that uh, it's much more important to hit it far than it is to hit it straight. For years, the blueprint that was required to win on the PGA Tour, you had to hit it straight. Well, that no longer is the case. Bryson DeChambeau, mm -hmm. leading example of that. They want to hit it now as far. Uh, I spent some time just recently within the last month with Vijay Singh. And I said, Vijay, you know, what I've noticed, and, and I'm sure you've picked up on it too, Dennis, the, the fourth and final rounds of these major championships, the golf courses used to be set up extremely difficult. Yep. Now they're set up where birdies and eagles are, are you know, prevalent. And the argument is that the general public wants to see birdies and eagles. I mean, the masters... Masters Sunday, uh, the whole locations are, are the easiest all week. And, and VJ uh, agreed with me on that. And, and he said, uh, you know, the, the lack of severe rough, golly, why not get up there and bash it 350 right. yards, 360 yards? And uh, so that's, you know, been a significant change in, in the sport. Uh, Accuracy is not as important. If, if there's listeners and, and viewers that you have, Dennis, that, that have youngsters, 12, 13, 14 years old, and, and, and they're showing a little flair to play the game, uh, what do I recommend to those uh, mom and dads now? I say, I'll tell you one thing. Just tell your son to swing as hard as he can <laughs> and to hit it as far as he can. You're right. Because unless you can do that, He's never going to go anywhere. You're absolutely right. Could not agree with you more. All right, Bob, stand by. We're going to take another short break, and we come back. We'll finish up our show and a little more information and finish up with our special guest, Bob Bupka. So stay with us. Back right after this. Fabulous Freddy's is having a spectacular coupon book sale going on right now. Their sale price on coupon books for either full service or exterior only is fabulous. You can purchase a coupon book where you buy seven and get three free, or you can purchase four and get one free. Head over to the Fabulous Freddy's on the southwest corner of Charleston and Fort Apache and check it out. Your car will love you for it. Experience a salon like no other. Charm Beauty Lounge specializes in hair, skin, and a non-surgical, painless way to fuller hair, designed to boost hair volume up to 400% without glue or solvents. Make your appointment today. Call 702-201-1655. If you're an avid golfer like I am, how great would it be living on a golf course? It's fantastic, but you're probably thinking golf course property is just too expensive. Well, I'm here to tell you that the folks at RWM Home Loans here in Las Vegas can make it happen. RWM Home Loans in Las Vegas will access a wide variety of ways to customize a loan to help you get into that golf course property or anywhere else for that matter. They offer first time home buyer programs, jumbo loans up to $5 million and even reverse mortgages. So do yourself a favor and call KC Zari right here in Las Vegas at 702-888-2251. Get started on that new home or property. That's 702-888-2251 or just go to rwmhomeloans.com.
All right, welcome back, everybody, to uh, going to wrap up the 19th hole podcast for golfers. I'm your host, Dennis Silvers. I have a little more to do with our special guest, Bob uh, Butka. Uh, Bob, do you think that the American women will ever dominate the LPGA Tour again because I don't think they have a chance? That's a wonderful question. Uh, and the reason they're not dominating, uh, and I foresee maybe the same fate for American male golfers right down the road, because the one thing that I've grown to know that the Asian golfers, you don't have to ask them to practice. I mean, you have to tell them. Their parents have to beg them to stop practicing. Yeah. I mean, 10, 12 hours every day. They want to get better. They want to get better. They want to get better. Uh, and that's what it takes. Now, American golfers, uh, you know, females, even males, there's a lot of distraction. Yeah. They, they play a lot of games with their fingers. They don't play it, uh, you know, on a driving range. And, uh, you know, the work ethic is to be admired uh, by people from outside the United States. And I think as a whole, we have to modify how, you know, Americans pursue uh, their excellence. I don't care what sport it is. I mean, it, it's not like it used to be. You j just show up and, and play. I mean, unless you practice, you know, and I tell, I, I get an opportunity to speak to a lot of juniors, 14, 15, 16 years old, I said, you know, you're pretty good. As a matter of fact, you, you're even better than good. But you know what? There's a thousand pretty goods out there. Yeah. And I said, the only thing that's going to separate the pretty goods are the ones that work harder. Yeah. It's not whether you're going to have more talent, because you're probably not. But if you work harder than everybody else, you'll have a chance. Yeah, totally, totally correct. Very, very well said. Uh, you know, there there are a few LPGA Tour players that uh, live here in Las Vegas. In fact, I've been in contact with uh, Danielle Kang, who's uh, off the tour for a while, having a little rehab with her spine. We have some other people. I don't watch, in all honesty, uh, that much as far as women's golf. I do watch some tournaments. But do you think that women's golf, tournament golf, Bob, needs a little boosting and if you think it does what would you do to increase the interest level to get more people out there to make it more exciting i think if the uh average male it's you know only strictly watch pga tour uh golf would be pleasantly surprised at the caliber uh, of golf that these lpga players are playing now uh, and the purses are going up. I yes. mean, uh, magnificent purse for the Women's Open. Uh, and other events uh, are coming online. Mike Wan, uh, the new uh, director for the United States Golf Association, former director, as you know, uh, for the LPGA okay. Tour. Uh, there's a big commitment uh, behind, uh, you know, women's golf. And, and I think it's good. And I, and I think the social aspects of it... Uh, are tremendous. Uh, it's just whether you want to be able to take that amount of time. It's a, it, it's as simple as that. Unless you have time, uh, you can't compete at, at the highest level. You, you can wish for it. You can pray for it. You can do anything, but unless you practice for it, you, you're not going to get it. You're, you're absolutely right. And I, I love, and, and I'm sure you're familiar with it, the quote by Gary Player, he, he says, the more that I practice, the luckier I get. <laughs> There's a He's lot to be said on. to that, Bob. Absolutely. Absolutely. The more I practice, the luckier I get. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one, one little tip that I'll pass along. Everybody is really concerned about hitting good shots when right. they play golf. Right. The fastest way to improve, Dennis, is to improve the quality of your bad shots so they're not quite as bad. That will reduce your score a lot quicker than hitting good shots. You're so correct. Take your fair share of good shots, 
but work hard on improving the quality of your poor shots. That's a great, that is a great, great trip. I know you're getting ready to go to St. Andrews. Uh, I know you're going to have a wonderful trip, but what else is on the horizon for Bob Bupka? Uh, I'm actually coming to you right now from one of my favorite places. I was born and raised on the east end of Long Island. I, I'm speaking to you probably as the crow flies about three miles from Shinnecock. Really? One of the finest golf courses on oh, the planet. God, yeah. Uh, I played there as a kid. I never knew it was so great until that first U.S. Open came in 1986. Right next door to Shinnecock is another place that very few people have heard of, National Golf Links of America. I remember giving Ben, ben Crenshaw was doing a thing for one of the area golf magazines, and he was playing the 18 best holes uh, on Long Island. So he played one hole at Shinnecock. He was going to get ready to play another hole at, at National. I fortunately had become friends with Ben. So I said, I'll give you a ride over to National, which is only, uh, you know, right next door. Yeah. And on the way over, Dennis, Ben said to me, Bob, there are no two finer golf courses in the world than Shinnecock and National that touch one another. Wow. I just recently saw Ben and I said, Ben, you know what? What you said about Shinnecock and National? He says, I know. He says, I told you they're the two finest courses that touch one another. He said, it's still true to this day. Wow. So wow. great story. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, National Golf Links is, uh, it's, you know, it, it's so rich in history. Yeah. And, and, and nobody knows about it. I yeah. mean, uh, it's a well-kept secret. And, you know, the locker room, the founder's locker room, Abner Doubleday, Henry Ford, General Eisenhower, Todd Lincoln, the list wow. goes on and on and on of people that have been members there. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Last question, and I'll let you go. Any predictions? Who's going to win the Open? Who do you like? Uh, boy, for selfish reasons, would I love to be able to say that Tiger kept his promise to me and wins another major? I'm sure I'm dreaming talking to you when I'm saying that. You are. <laughs> probably, you are. Uh, you know, it's a glorified dream. Uh, golly, I, I don't think it's any stretch of the imagination to, to see Scotty Scheffler come yeah. back and and win his second major. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Always, always is uh, always going to be a danger. Anyway, Bob, I'll let you go. I can't thank you enough, as you know, for taking time out to come on the show. We absolutely love having you on. Uh, I know you're going to have a great trip over there. Uh, wish nothing but the best for you and Janice. Stay well, and uh, we'll be back with you sooner than later, my friend. Well, it's always a pleasure to be on with you. I really admire your passion for this sport of golf. Thanks for having me, Dennis. Coming from you, that's a very, very great compliment. Thank you, Bob. All right, we're going to uh, wrap it up for this edition of the 19th Old Podcast for Golfers. I've been your host, Dennis Silvers. Remember, keep it in the short stuff. Get out and play some golf. We'll see you back next time. So long. As golfers, we want instant gratification when it comes to a better golf swing and playing better golf. Impossible, you say? Not anymore. Golf Boost Artificial Intelligence AI, has developed and patented the most advanced swing analysis technology in golf. Simply, the algorithms detect your body position and then analyze your golf swing using their artificial intelligence technology. The AI captures all the relevant data from your swing video and then presents you a personalized lesson. Golf Boost AI is the ultimate swing analysis and virtual instruction system for golfers of all ages and abilities. This sophisticated software takes into consideration your height and build, playing level, and returns the ideal solution for your swing. Bottom line, Golf Boost AI is an incredibly convenient and cost-effective tool for golfers to improve their swing. Go to golfboost.com and check it out. The app is free to download and try. Visit golfboost.com today. Innovation begins at a single point. 
elements, each with their unique character. Fire Ford Steel creates unprecedented control. Chemistry delivers a touch so soft, combined to create a level of performance previously unimagined. Like magic, the elixir, the new tour ball from Encore.